Hi all you lovely kings, queens, and in-betweens, my name is Elaine, and today I'm going to be both showing you how to play and reviewing Dragon Vault's latest game, Dragon Vault Voyage of Peril. It's a game that can support up to eight players, and whose playtime varies widely depending on the amount of players who are playing with you. I'm going to begin by showing you all how to play before providing my final thoughts on the game. Setup for the game is super easy, barely an inconvenience. First, you're going to separate the adventure deck from the side deck, and you do this by looking at the top right hand corner of each card. The adventure deck has these little arrows, and the side deck does not, and it contains things like your champions and other starting cards. At that point, you're going to shuffle the adventure deck up and turn it face down in the middle of the table. From there, all players are going to choose their champion, or if you'd like to randomize things, you can deal one randomly to every player. Then players are going to be given two gold coins and one food card from the side deck, which forms their starting hand, which is going to be kept secret from the other players. Then players are going to roll a d6 to determine who goes first, and play begins with the highest roller and then proceeds clockwise. On your turn, you may begin by playing as many cards as you want from your hand. For example, if I'm playing Naomi and I've taken damage, I could then choose to play this food card here to heal myself three damage. From there, I would draw from the adventure deck. I'm just going to take a card and flip it over, and then I'm going to put it into my hand. You would put the card you draw into your hand, keeping it secret from all other players at all times unless it is an encounter card. If I were to draw an encounter card, like so, this blue dragon here, I have to pay two treasure or take three damage. I have to resolve this immediately because I don't want to take damage. I can add two treasure to the discard pile. Once I've done this or drawn another type of card and put it into my hand, my turn is over and play continues. There are a few different ways in which you can lose the game. First, each champion has a toughness score, which is seen here. For example, Naomi has a toughness of seven. This shows how much damage they can take before they die. If your champion takes damage equal to their toughness, the champion dies and you're out of the game. At that point, your hand is placed into the discard pile. However, there is a looting mechanic. If a player's champion dies during your turn, you can loot the player's hand before it is discarded. Looting means you can take any card of your choice from their hand. So let's say Naomi died on Annabelle's turn. She could take this gold coin from their hand, place it into her own hand, and then Naomi's cards are discarded. Gameplay is going to continue with each surviving champion taking a turn until the adventure deck runs out. Then, the players with surviving champions reveal their hands. The winner is the individual with the most treasure. So in this case, Annabelle would be the winner. Now that I've taken the time to show you all how to play, I want to take a few moments to provide my final thoughts on the game. My opinion of this game is predominantly positive. I like that it's fast paced. I like that it can support up to eight players, that it's table and shelf friendly, that it's family friendly, and that like previous iterations of the game, it features a lot of nice art. I will say, however, that some of the art seems to fit with the C theme better than others. I like the quality of the components. I like that the cards are on very thick stock and that they have rounded edges. What I don't like, however, is the box this game comes in. It's very difficult to open without damaging, and I really wish they would have used another box type, maybe something with a magnetic flap like what you see in Unstable Unicorns, or a more traditional game box where you lift off the lid, like what you would find on Stratego or Life. The other thing I don't like is that there are no die included in the game. I'm someone who really likes all of the components I need to play a game to be in the box. And I feel that the price is a little hefty for what it is. I think if they shaved off five to ten dollars, it would find a nice sweet spot. Otherwise, I have nothing bad to say. This game is a lot of fun, especially with a larger group of people, and is a nice addition to the Dragon Vaults lineup. And there you have it, all you lovely kings, queens, and in-betweens, my how to play and review of Dragon Vault Voyage of Peril. What did you think of my review? Did I leave anything out? Have you played this game? Who's your favorite champion if you've played this game? Let me know down below in the comments. I always like to know what you kings queens and in-betweens think and if you like what you saw here today please smash that like button until it's blue subscribe ring that bell so you always know what's up and i'll catch you all in the next one bye guys hi tasia valenza aka poison ivy and you've just been watching King's Entertainment Reviews. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and watch.